Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, October 19th, just after midnight. The models are in and they are ever increasing. But the big story, Great Falls breaks the daily snowfall record. And that is today's first boom. Great Falls sets a new daily snowfall record Saturday as a three day weekend storm dumped nearly a foot of snow in the city with more of the white stuff in the forecast, along with the possibility of freezing rain on Monday. Keep calm. It's boom time. Scenes from another record snowfall just south of Aaron Billings. Residents clean up as record snow falls in the Billings area on Sunday. Snowfall in the Billings area varied from five inches to over a foot northwest of the city. Take a look at the cross country skiing early in the fall. Beautiful. Now, not that beautiful. The weather outside is frightful in Billings and it's not going to be delightful for a while. Monday high of 38 and then you're going to warm up into the global warming goodness of Tuesday and that is your lose day because every single day after that gets more and more miserable where a high temperature of 23 is expected for next weekend. 25 to 23 with more snow coming and I'm sure people are bumming. Grand solar minimum much. Here's Nebraska. Kiss my National Weather Service daily snowfall totals showing that three day event. 72 hours of powers up to 30 inches of snow in some regions, especially in northern Wyoming. Most of western Montana has been buried and a large portion of central Nebraska got kicked in the eight inches right there. Now let's talk about the derecho that happened earlier this summer. Derecho crop damage in Iowa continues to increase. Yeah, we, we knew that, but how big? Crop loss estimates from a rare windstorm that slammed Iowa in August have increased by more than 50%, a new report shows. And here you can see some dis totally destroyed grain silos. Now with the corn lying down, it's already makes it more difficult to harvest any type of crop at all. And with snow lying on Iowa, it's not going to make it any easier. Those fields will be muddy. And luckily there's not heavy amounts of snow, but let's just look at these models. And we'll move it through. Here's your Monday. More snow to that same region, including Iowa, South Dakota, and now central Montana picking up on the party. Tuesday. More snow, especially heads up southern Minnesota, as well as that band is moving into Wisconsin. And by Wednesday, it will move east. And another system moving into that same region next week, Thursday and Friday this week. Here we are next weekend. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Take a look at that storm. Now, these are going to change, but I was pointing this out yesterday and I said North Dakota South Carolina I think and clearly you know what I meant North Dakota South Dakota state line and the totals are getting ridiculous it's looking like 23 to 30 inches in some areas here so this could be the Halloween blizzard to remember but look at this little eastern piece coming through Arkansas Missouri Oklahoma and even Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, possibly hitting K Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, and the Appalachians. So lots of stuff happening, lots of snow coming, and I'm sure many skiers are not bumming. Snow from the northern Rockies to the northern plains, heat and critical fire weather in California. Low pressure will sweep from the northern Rockies into the northern plains this weekend, bringing the first accumulating snowfall of the season to many areas. While cool weather will prevail, prevail in the east, parts of California and the southwest will be unusually warm. Critical fire weather conditions are also forecast for portions of California and southwest, including the high plains in the Midwest. And here we are, seismic update. We have a very interesting quake kicking off here, 4.3 in the Northwest Territories, which gave me some pause and I wanted to look a little deeper here. So and as I was looking deeper, I noticed some interesting quakes going on up in Cascadia. So let's just look at seven days all magnitude here, which might melt down my computer. There it is. Now we're on the satellite image 
And what I noticed is a moderate uptick in what appears to be magmatic activity on the flanks of all of these volcanoes, including many erupting volcanoes that haven't erupted for hundreds of years. Specifically, one of the most dangerous and active volcanoes in the region, Glacier Peak. Now here's Glacier Peak and here's Mount Baker. Both are active and at risk of erupting in the near future. All there needs to be is some uptick activity, which we're seeing that uptick right near those volcanoes. And this could be magma moving into the region. So, very interesting there. Now, there are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people living along lahar routes. These ha occur when Glacier or Mount Baker, mountains that have perpetual ice caps on the surface, like Mount St. Helens, erupt and melt all that snow and ice in an instant. Mud flows move down the river valleys at very high speed, and they make it all the way to the ocean, for goodness sakes. Some of the most devastating and dangerous, the most dangerous volcano in the United States currently is Glacier Peak. So if you live in any of these regions, please heed the warnings. Any of these cities. And uh, I'll leave you links to all these maps below. Now, Glacier Peak, covered here by the Smithsonian, has a limited eruptive history, but we can see that a VEI-4 was confirmed back in 200 AD. That's 1,800 years ago. <coughs> and that, uh, if we just go back in time 1,800 years ago, well, where does that bring us? It, bring up, it brings us into the Dalton minimum. Oh, my bad. That's in 1,800. If you go back 1,800 years ago, we're not on this map. But what I, I did want to bring to your attention is, is this. Uh, that on the Smithsonian Glacier Peak page here, the last known eruption was in 1,700. So the last known eruption was in 1,700 here at the bottom, bottom of the Maunder Minimum. And 2,000 years prior to that, we were in the bottom, bottom of another grand solar minimum. And as we enter this grand minimum, we can expect a VEI 2, 3, or 4 coming from Glacier Peak. Now here is a close-up of the Glacier Peak volcano and the warning zone for pyroclastic flows. Those are in the peach, so that's very near the peak. And then the Lahars, which move down the, the valleys here. Darrington, Rockport, Concrete. Why do you think they call it that? Cedro Woolley, Arlington, Grant, uh, Stanwood, and the coast, all at risk from large lahars if Glacier decides to erupt. And it will erupt. Now, what we're looking at here is the eruption history of Glacier Peak going back in time. And I, what I want to point out is that just recently, right here, this puff, this is the Dalton and the Maunder Minimum puffs. Small steam eruptions is what they were called. Now, 1,800 years ago, that VEI-4 eruption is right here. And that was lava dome collapses and lahars large enough to reach the sea, which would have taken out all of those cities I just pointed out. So the eruption that occurred 1,800 years ago on Glacier Peak took out all of the people living on those rivers. Now, if we go back to the Younger Dryas 12,900 years ago, an eruption five to ten times the size of Mount St. Helens occurred at Glacier. There were multiple large tephra eruptions, lava dome collapses, and lahars large enough to reach the sea on every river valley. So this is the eruptive nature of Glacier. And if we're talking about a 13,000 year cosmic cycle and we went from boom to smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, what's the next phase of the cycle? We go back to boom. And that's a boom. Hope you got something out of the video. Oppenheimer Ranch Project got its second community guideline strike. We are teetering on the edge of com being completely removed. If you haven't subscribed to Magnetic Reversal News, do it now. I don't think I can even post over there for the next week or so. So there will be nothing published on Oppenheimer Ranch Project because we are being blocked. It's the nature of censorship and the world we're living in. Thanks to all of our donors. We are trying to get set up on other platforms now. 
in the eventuality that they erase us. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the boxes illuminating for more information.